I screwed up in that last video. Okay, don't worry, the video itself is accurate and my conclusion is mostly unchanged, but after doing a bit more research I feel like I now need to make this video updating my view. First of all, when I initially decided to make videos about Undertale, I made the decision not to watch any other videos about the series aside from game theories, on account that I'd already seen them. This was in order not to take my view about the games with other people's viewpoints. I wanted to enter relatively clean and give you guys a fresh perspective with new eyes. So I joined the Underminer community and downloaded the Undertale mod tool used by the modders and underminers to dig through the files. I also watched full playthroughs of the games as well as keeping notes in a little book every time I needed to remember to look back into something. Then I started to look into Toby Fox and find as many of his interviews as possible. It definitely felt like I was making headway and I was confident enough in my theories to make my first video. However, and I know it seems contrary to how I normally respond to my community, i.e. barely at all, but I actually really care about what you guys think and say. I read every comment and give time to every suggestion. I just don't know how to respond to people after reading the comments, I'm not great in that sense. But I promise you it is appreciated. When you write a comment, I read a comment. Whether or not I act on it is different, but I definitely give them consideration. So, as per Michael Kint's suggestion, I decided to check out a bunch of different channels, specifically Two Left Thumbs Undertale slash Deltarune Evidence Collections. And after watching through them all, I realised that, damn, there's a lot of stuff I missed that I really could have looked into. Also, FYI, if you guys know of any other channels that are also detailing comprehensively bugs, easter eggs, and Undertale lore, I'd love to see them. So, what did I not take into account? Let's start with Undertale and Deltarune's development which I now know was only half understood by me at the time. 1. The place I should have looked for clues, but never did, was Toby Fox's Twitter. I'm far too much of an old hat 90s kid researcher and never assumed to find information from somebody's social media that would be worth a damn. I just kept looking for official interviews and statements as I thought that's where the meat of things would be. I was completely wrong. 2. One of the things I should have looked at is whether or not the Undertale.com and Deltarune.com sites were archived before the game's release dates. This would have given me a more accurate time frame of when Toby was at least certain of the inevitable release of either game to the public. The same goes for looking into the actual Kickstarter page. I should have snipped around there some more. 3. I should have watched other videos regarding Undertale and Deltarune. While I was confident in my initial findings, I shouldn't have been filled with such hubris to think that I definitely had all I needed to make my first video. I knew the series was deep, but not this deep. So, here's that timeline I had in the last video. As you can see, I've added a little bit more to it. Let me first detail what is added, and then I'll speak about how it changes my view of the series to a degree. The first thing is, according to Toby on Twitter, he posted some screenshots of an Earthbound hack that was originally meant to be Undertale on a forum back in 2012. This would likely be during the time that Deltarune was morphing into Undertale, though not quite understood to be fully realised as the Undertale project. Second is that after surpassing $37,500 on Kickstarter, Toby hints during a Kickstarter update that with this amount of money he'll expand the Undertale universe with another game. This statement seems to be echoed during the 2018 release of Deltarune by Toby as he uses the same thematic wording to describe Deltarune's coming as he did while promising a second game in the Kickstarter update. Thirdly is that Toby has posted to Twitter the designs for the main characters of Deltarune which he states were done back in 2014, implying Toby was thinking about Deltarune during Undertale's development. Fourth is that shortly after Undertale's release, Deltarune.com is archived December 9th, 2015. It contains a single dark picture titled him.png, that when the contrast is upped it seems to be a message from Garster in Winding's font. It is then updated a year later to a different message. The two messages in order are, this next experiment seems very, very interesting, and in 2016, the three heroes appear to banish the angels' heaven. And finally, in 2018, the Switch version of Undertale is released. I initially thought this was just adding the character Mad Mew Mew to the game, but I missed an important detail, Clam Girl. Clam Girl is a character that appears when a certain fun value is rolled when the game starts and appears in the waterfall area of Undertale. Now, I left her out of the initial video despite knowing of her existence because I wanted to add her to a different video exploring Garster, but I didn't know of her attributes in the Switch version of Undertale, and my god was she connected to Garster, I wish I could prove that I had an inkling before this. I'll explain that in the Garster video though. She displays an interaction with the player that is unique to the Switch version. 
Normally she mentions her neighbor's daughter Susie, spelled differently from the Susie in Deltarune, and says that she may be the reason for us being here in the first place, as in Susie. But during the epilogue of the Switch version, if you talk to her, she says that the time we'll meet Susie is fast approaching, and then disappears, grayscale, while the Mystery Man theme plays. Her sprite is called Clam Girl Gona. Weeks later, after this Switch version of Undertale, Deltarune is released. Now, how does this change my view of Deltarune as it relates to Undertale, now that they seem more linked in development than I previously thought? Honestly, not that much. Let's start with what I changed my mind about. Deltarune was not an afterthought. Toby definitely considered making Deltarune after Undertale and during Undertale's development. We can see that in his fun game concepts of Deltarune's main characters and his Kickstarter promises that it was definitely on the table the entire time. And Deltarune, or at least a variant of Deltarune, was definitely going to be that future game, as he already was working on it prior to Undertale, though it seems that prior to 2014 he had only come up with the concepts for the playing card characters and their universe. So it seems there was a symbiotic joining of the two ideas, the playing card world and the expanded Undertale universe, which became the next game in the series. This is contrary to my initial understanding of the game's development, in which I believe that Deltarune was put on pause or abandoned before and during Undertale's development, with Toby only deciding to create another game after Undertale's success, giving the games in the series a greater degree of separation in regards to how each of their universe's lore were developed going strictly from standalone Undertale, developed in a vacuum, to Deltarune, which as the second game, if it wishes to relate itself in a less superficial manner to Undertale, must act as a framing device to Undertale's universe if it isn't a direct sequel. Now it seems that there may be within Undertale yet to be found or contextualized hints as to the existence of Deltarune's universe and its relation to Undertale, but in saying that I still believe Deltarune is separated enough as a game from Undertale's development so as it is still only able to be viewed as a device to contextualize Undertale as a universe. I'm sure he intended to make another game after Undertale as he states, but as we can see, the steps to truly cement Deltarune as an up-and-coming title were only done after the huge success of Undertale. Lancer had dialogue back in 2012, sure, but from what we can see, the three main characters weren't imagined until at least 2014 to 2015. This cements the idea that, as Toby states to the same effect, his idea for Deltarune was a mixture of the earlier idea and Undertale. So the games are more closely linked in terms of their development, but I mean Toby prior to the release of Undertale wasn't an indie darling with tons of fans. He was very much a relatively popular indie developer with a pretty successful Kickstarter, but still wasn't so assured as to the inevitable popularity of his upcoming game that he would have already planned out an entire universe of canon that would be waiting in the wings to be utilised in other games to further expand and integrate the series. Also, Toby states in his Kickstarter that he wanted the release date for Undertale to be summer 2014, but it ended up taking until September 2015 to actually release it. I doubt a man behind schedule had time during the game's development to also be fleshing out lore and story for a game that he would be making after this current one was done. What we will be finding in Undertale as to its relation to Deltarune would probably be nothing more than breadcrumbs like Clam Girl left by Toby, superficial similarities that hinted at Deltarune's existence and release, but nothing that would really be considered deep lore. So to summarise, instead of me initially believing Toby developed Undertale with no intention of creating Deltarune, therefore restricting Deltarune to either be a standalone series with separate lore, or have it act as a framing device to expand on Undertale if it isn't a direct sequel, with any and all lore connections being afterthoughts Toby made to fit Deltarune, I now believe Toby made Undertale with the assumption that he may make Deltarune if Undertale was a success, though it wasn't a sure thing therefore opening up the possibility that Undertale's universe may have been tailored to a possible next game in the series, which might mean ambiguous or yet to be discovered connections to Undertale and Deltarune and vice versa, though I'm cynical as to the extent of these universes' connections. So I suppose the purpose of this video is to show you that I'm listening to you guys, and I'm trying to explore every avenue. In fact I'm currently trying to learn Game Maker at night to understand Toby's code better. I also made this specific video to show you that I'm also willing to point out when I'm wrong, so you can more easily approach me in the comments with suggestions as to why you think I'm mistaken. Anyway, this script was written before Undertale's Xbox One release, and that version seems to have a slot machine, so that could be something interesting. Best check it out. Okay, see ya.